Hello there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a simple sunset scene to share with you using this special spot in my heart set. So let's get started. This is the special spot in my heart set. I've stamped it onto some white cardstock with black ink and these are the Copic markers that I'm going to use. If I'm not 100% sure on the colour combination that I might use, I tend to just kind of swatch them out onto some cardstock, the cardstock that I'm using to colour in the images, so that I can see if they're likely to go together. Now sometimes, unless you colour it, you never know, but sometimes it does just help to kind of know which markers you want to grab for. So I'm starting off by Kind of putting in my darkest shade i always work darkest to lightest pretty much i just find that i get a better blend that way so i'm starting off with my darkest shade here for the giraffe's body and this is yr27 so i am speeding up my coloring here it's very simple copic coloring these images didn't take too long to color actually um, but there is kind of quite a lot of fiddly areas between all of these spots and things like that on the giraffes so once i've added in my darkest area i'm then going in with my mid-tone which is yr24 these giraffes are just absolutely adorable. I really love the kind of sketchy feel to the illustrations as well. I find that really quite nice. So I'm kind of going over some of the area that I've already coloured in. I don't want to go over it completely because the lighter colour will bleach the darker colour. But I want to go over it enough so that they blend together. And then I'm going to go in with my lightest shade, which is YR31. And as you can see, this is quite a lot lighter. So what I do is I tend to kind of just map in the colour and not worry about blending it together and then go black, uh, go back, excuse me, and blend it together. Because for some reason, if the cardstock is kind of wet with the alcohol, I find that then the Copic markers blend quite nicely together. So now I'm going to go in with for the darkest areas for the spots and also the hooves and then his kind of mouth area as well. So I'm starting off with my darkest shade here which is E39. I did forget to colour it in her tail there so I am going to go back and colour that in in a little while. So I'm just focusing most of the darkest colour on this image towards the right hand side. I'm then going to blend that out with the E99 and to be honest this isn't a huge amount of difference between the E39, it's just got a bit more of a yellow tone to it. But when I add in my lightest shade which is E97, that E99 just helps to kind of blend them together. So I can just go over those areas, some of them are really tiny so they don't really need much blending on those spots. I did end up colouring the giraffes a little bit darker than I had planned on but I do think they still looked quite nice, they're quite kind of vibrant I suppose um, but I had planned on doing them a little bit uh, less dark. For the ear I used R12 and then for the heart here I'm using R39, R37 and R35. So I coloured the other baby giraffe off camera and then I'm going in here with my polychromos pencils. I'm using a burnt sienna and burnt ochre and I'm just going over the darkest areas. I could do this with Copic markers but I actually quite like the kind of texture that the pencils give especially with animal images. I find that it kind of although giraffes don't have fur on their hooves <laughs> in particular um, I find that I quite like that kind of texture of the pencils if that makes sense so I'm just going over a few areas just where I want to add that kind of bit of texture and a little bit more shadow and darkness and then I'm going to take the special spot in my heart dynamics and I'm going to place those dies over the top of my images, hold them down with some low tack tape and run those through my die cutting machine. I did cut both of those hearts out, in the end I only used the little one but I wasn't 100% sure at this point in time so it's quite nice just to have extra images if you need them. 
So now I've got my images ready, I'm going to work on the card itself. So I've taken a panel of white cardstock that's cut to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and I'm taking the rectangle extraordinaire stencil and I'm just placing that on top, holding it down with some post-it tape and then I'm going to add some ink blending inside of that aperture that this stencil gives which is really nice. I really like kind of focusing the you know like the card design into a certain space quite often on a card so i'm using distress inks for my ink blending here this first color is mustard seed and i want i don't want the ink to go all the way to the bottom of the rectangle because i want to add my sentiment there so i'm going to kind of try and have it so it just is slightly above that line so that you don't see that bottom line of it I'm then going in with dried marigold and adding that towards the top. I'm going to try and create like a sunset. So I want it to be darker at the top and kind of blend out lighter at the bottom. I'm then going in with worn lipstick and adding that just towards the top. I do dab off the excess ink onto a scrap piece of paper that's on the right hand side there and that just kind of helps a little bit with ink blending I think and then my last colour there was abandoned coral I'm then taking the radiating rays stencil and I'm just going to place this towards the top of that kind of rectangle there I want to just add some added interest onto the card and make it look kind of like there's sun rays coming from the top so I'm just going to use those same inks and just really lightly just add a little bit of ink blending onto that I don't want to touch the bottom of the stencil where the rays finish because I want it to kind of look like they would be coming completely down but I'm only actually adding them towards the top of that panel and then once I take the stencil off you'll be able to see that it's just kind of a subtle added interest to that sunset And then the best part, I get to remove all of the stencils and the post-it tape. And I really love just like that white crisp border around the ink blending in the middle. So I'm just figuring out here where my sentiment's going to go. I knew that I wanted it to be towards the bottom. And I did already take the sentiment out of that set, but I still wasn't 100% sure which one I was going to use. So I'm just using the packaging there just to kind of place that on top. Give me a guide of which sentiment is going to fit. I'm then going to take some transparency or acetate or anything you want to and I like to just place that in the misty and on top of my panel and actually stamp onto that because I don't want to mess up my sentiment at this point when I've taken a bit of time to do that ink blending. So I'm just going to make sure that that sentiment is straight and also make sure that my giraffes are going to be okay on top of it. And I think that's fine. So I'm going to take out that acetate and then I can stamp my sentiment down at the bottom there. I do stamp it twice just to make sure that I get a really nice dark impression. And that's just going to ground those giraffes as well because I didn't actually add any ground onto it. But that sentiment is just going to kind of trick your eye into thinking that there's ground there. I've added some tape runner onto the back of that panel and I'm adding that onto an A2 size card base. So this is a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I've added some thin foam tape onto the back of my giraffes here and I was just placing them down so that I could see exactly where I wanted them to be adhered before I actually stick them down. So I can just remove the backings off of that foam tape with some tweezers and then I can just place them down onto the card and I just love how that little baby giraffe is just looking up at that other one it's just such an adorable little expression and I've been using a lot of thin foam tape recently I find it quite helpful to not add too much bulk onto my cards but still have that kind of added dimension as well so I can just place that baby one down there 
and then I've got that little heart and I have cut a further three die cuts just from plain white cardstock and stacked them up one on top of each other and then have the stamped one at the top and I've just placed a small dab of the on point precision glue onto the card and then I'm just adding that heart on top and I can just move it around with the pokey tool and let that dry. I thought that the heart there on the right hand side would kind of balance out the panel a little bit and then to finish off I'm just going to add some white highlights onto the giraffes using a white gel pen. So I tend to kind of do some lines and then little dots afterwards. I'm not quite sure why, but that's how I like to do sort of highlights on images. So I'm just going to add a few onto the giraffes. And that is the card finished for today. Like I said, I really like how that tiny little heart just balances out the images and I just think they're absolutely adorable with that sunset in the background. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.